Hi guys, my name is Crystal Bianca and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the book called Anna Kay by Jenny Lee. Anna Kay is basically a modern retelling of the classic Anna Karenina. And as soon as I heard that this existed, I wanted to read it straight away. I was super duper excited to buy this because Anna Karenina is one of my most favorite movies of all time. And I think what I love the most is that it's a tragic love story. And I love nothing more than a really good story. So this book is basically about a girl who's already in a really perfect relationship and she ends up falling for another guy who's a bit of a playboy, he's a bit charming but he's completely handsome and it's about her resisting temptation and basically dealing with the consequences of cheating in a relationship. It basically follows around six different characters and it sort of talks about how they find their way through relationships and just life in general. So I'm going to jump right in. If any of you guys haven't read it yet or don't want to be spoiled, I would probably leave the video now. But if those of you who have read the book, keep on watching. I think one huge problem that I have with this book is that they're trying too hard to make it relatable to the point where the characters and the relationships don't feel really realistic or natural, if you know what I mean. But what I can commend the author on is by mimicking the original characters, sort of getting their personalities into modern day people. I think that Jenny's done a really good job at doing that. I could see Anna's character throughout the whole way, just like the original. I could see Vronsky's character. I could also see um, Dustin's character, for sure. I had a hard time trying to separate the actual book and the movie images that I have in my head. So I'll be reading part of the story and I'll be like, oh yeah, that's the part that happened in the movie. So I was always constantly comparing. In a way, it helped me. Like, I could remember the characters a lot better because I could sort of compare these characters to the ones in the movie. Sometimes I have a lot of trouble reading books that are in third person. I really have trouble connecting with the characters, but this is sort of the only way that the author could really do the story because we're not just really following that and Vronsky's story, we're also following other characters' stories like Dustin as well. So at the beginning I sort of had trouble with that but then I actually got used to the style of writing and then I did end up connecting with the characters a lot more later on in the story. So what did I love about the story? I really loved Bea's character. I think that the adaption of Beatrice's character was really well done. And I loved the way that they sort of made her into a modern version of what she was in the original. I also love how some of the scenes were replicated from the original novel as well, and they were just as dramatic as the original. One of the scenes in particular was Vronsky and Anna at Beatrice's party, and they were dancing together. And Anna's boyfriend and his stepsister, I think, Eleanor, turn up to the party when they're not supposed to be there and they end up catching Anna and Vronsky dancing intimately together. And then Anna and her boyfriend end up having a little bit of a tiff afterwards. And I really found that part of the story really gripping. One bit that I really loved from the story was this bit. So it's on page 226 and Alexander goes, you're beautiful, Alexander said in a soft voice. So beautiful that when you walk into a room, every boy can't help but notice. Clearly, Vronsky is taken with you, and I don't blame him. I'm not saying you're, you're purposely leading him on, but what I am saying is if you do so, even by accident, it would be untoward. To him and to me. You should be careful not to let him misinterpret your overtures of friendship as anything more. I don't like to be the subject of gossip. And I really, really, really love that book because it reminded me of the scene in the movie where Kira Knightley standing by the doorway and her husband, he's sitting on the chair looking out and she's sort of talking to him through the door and it just reminded me so much of that scene. I really, really loved it. Another part I really liked about the book was the just small little details that sort of made the book the way that it was. Vronsky's mother has a dog in the same dog show as Anna and she actually named her dog Tolstoy and Tolstoy after the original writer of Anna Karenina. And it's just stuff like that that I really appreciate in writing. A major theme that's really prevalent in Anna Karenina is 
cheating and whether it was right for Anna to cheat on her boyfriend or her husband, but in this case her boyfriend, and whether it's really justified and is it moral and that sort of thing. And I remember watching the original and really hating Anna's husband and really wanting her to be happy with Alexei or Vronsky. And it's hard to pull that off. It's hard to make someone dismiss the fact that Anna's actually cheating. And when I try and think about whether this book really pulled it off, I don't know. I feel like I can't let Anna off the hook as much as I could in the movie, if you know what I mean. So there's still, it takes a really good writer to sort of pull that off. And I don't know whether Jenny's really pulled that off, but that's really a subject of really conversation and a lot of people are going to have really different opinions on that. Another big thing about the book is the tragic ending. That's the whole big thing about the Anna Karenina story. And throughout the book I was wondering to myself, are they going to make it tragic? I know this is a YA book, will they make it a nice happily ever after sort of thing because it's a younger audience? But I was pleasantly surprised when they did have a tragic ending. I wasn't expecting it and I love the unexpected in books. I love plot twists and I was really shocked with what happened. When Vronsky and Anna went to the train station and they saw the homeless guy there and I knew, I knew that something bad was going to happen. And I was sort of at the edge of my seat and I'm like, oh my god, what's going to happen? And Anna, of course, she has this love of animals and she goes onto the tracks trying to save the, old, the homeless guy's dog. And she's trying to get the dog and then Vronsky goes after her and then the train's coming and then oh my god. Oh, it was it was a bit frustrating reading it because Vronsky ends up getting Anna off the tracks in time and then he spots, um, he gets a dog off the tracks. It was a charm that he got for Anna when they first met and the train's coming, like he could die but this charm is obviously more important to him than living. Because Bronski ends up dying <laughs> and I was sad I was so close to crying but I didn't I just I don't know it was frustrating like I was sad but I was completely frustrated but I was actually kind of glad that they had a tragic ending I know this sounds really mean but I love tragic endings I think that they're more I don't know they stay with me much longer than what happily ever afters do Overall, I really did like the book. There were a few things that I'll probably change, like I think there was way too much slang in that book. One second Anna's talking posh and the next she's talking slang and then there's slang thrown around everywhere and I don't think that young people really use that much slang nowadays so that sort of made the story feel a bit unrealistic. But the story itself and the way that they sort of adapted the scenes and the characters to a modern day situation, I think it was really cleverly done. So overall, I would give Anna Kay by Jenny Lee 3 out of 5 stars. Have any of you read Anna Kay yet? If you have, let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below. And if you're interested in more book reviews, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.